Hi, I'm Christine Hamilton, and welcome to What Do You Do? In today's show, we'll examine stories that required quick and decisive action, and watch how things unfold in the heat of the moment. Our first story happens on public transportation, which reminds us that emergencies can happen anywhere at any time. Now, the fact of the matter is, most people don't know what to do when something unexpected happens. But young Sarah Broski does, as she recently proved while riding the train on her way home. In many ways, Sarah Broski is the typical American teenager. Sarah is a bright, fun, vivacious teenage girl. Part of Sarah's daily routine involves commuting back and forth to school, which she does on public transportation. Every day I, I go to school in Berkeley, and so I take BART, which is the public transportation system here in the Bay Area. This particular trip home starts out like any other. Sarah takes a seat and takes in the scenery as the train rumbles along. When I came home on the train, I heard an announcement that said that there was going to be a delay due to a medical emergency. An announcement is made over the PA system on the train that a passenger has collapsed and Sarah, who has been taking classes in CPR, rushes over to see how she can help. I walked into the car about halfway down the train and I just saw a woman slumped over in her chair. I stepped forward and I said, I'm a trained lifeguard and I know CPR. With the help of another passenger, Sarah starts chest compressions in an effort to revive the woman. I began CPR and I did about two cycles of CPR. She took over the breathing and I did the compressions probably for about five minutes. Sarah continues working on the woman until the paramedics arrive and take her to get further medical attention. When Sarah finally gets off at her stop, she's unsure of the woman's condition. In fact, she fears the worst. She got into the car and collapsed beside me and I said, what's the matter, what happened? And she said, uh, a, lady, a lady collapsed on BART and I just finished doing CPR on her. And at that time, Sarah said, I, I think she probably died. I think what I was really worried about was that this woman that I, I tried to help her, I was so sure that she had died. Thanks in large part to Sarah's actions, the woman is able to make a full recovery. I'm really happy for that I was able to help someone out in that way, keep a family whole. What do you do to help someone in this situation? Doing something is better than doing nothing, so if you can help, you should try. Call 911 to try and get professional help. Humming a tune like Stayin' Alive or Another One Bites the Dust helps keep chest compressions in the proper rhythm. While others make a big deal out of what Sarah did on her way home that day, she sees it as a simple case of having the skills to do something and getting it done. I didn't want my friends to treat me differently. I didn't want people to say, oh, that's Sarah Broski, the girl that saved someone's life. Of course, there are those who can't help but be impressed with how Sarah handled herself in a real life or death situation. I was proud right off the bat that Sarah had stepped up and, and done what she could do um, when, when other people there you know, either couldn't help or, or wouldn't help. Sarah feels the real lesson to be learned from her story is that more people need to learn CPR. I think that this situation shows that it's really important for CPR to become a more generally known um, skill. We don't have CPR classes in school. If everyone knew CPR, then what I did wouldn't be considered special. It would be considered normal, average. And so I think that'd be really lovely. 